Good evening. Proverbs chapter 30, verses 5 and 6. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Don't add to the book. Don't add to the scriptures. Okay? Go to Luke chapter 24. Of course, in the authorized version of the scriptures. Luke chapter 24. Verses 25 and 26. Then our Lord Jesus Christ, after his death, burial, and resurrection, uh, came walking up among the two guys who were on the road to Emmaus. Okay? Verse 25 and verse 26 in Luke chapter 24. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Verse 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. The Lord Jesus Christ. God our Father expounded the scriptures himself. Uh, verses 44 on to verse 45 now. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. And verse 45. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. He opened their understanding. Who is he? The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay. John chapter 16. John chapter 16, verses 13 on to verse 14. John chapter 16, verses 13 on to verse 14. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of Truth, that's a capital S by the way, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and he will shew you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. The Spirit of Truth will guide you into all truth. The Lord opened their understanding to understand the Scriptures, and he also expounded them the Scriptures. And every word of God is pure. Pretty simple enough, isn't it? And of course, of course, 2 Timothy chapter 3, 2 Timothy, not 2 Thessalonians, Brad, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 on to verse 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Thank you, brother. So, the scriptures, the word of God is pure, perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration. And the Lord Jesus Christ expounds the scriptures and will open up the scriptures unto you. And the spirit of truth, when he has come, 
He shall guide you into all truth. Can you guess where we're going next? How about 2 Corinthians chapter 3? <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 3, <clears throat> verses 12, on to verse 17. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 12, on to verse 17. Seeing then that we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, blinded minds. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament which veil is done away in Christ. The circumcision made without hands, okay? But even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is still upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. What's the it? Verse 16. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Verse 15. But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Heart. So when the heart turns on to the Lord, when the heart, it's an issue of the heart. Now, the Lord is that, capital S, Spirit. And where the Spirit, capital S, of the Lord is, there is liberty. Meaning, the Holy Ghost is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is that Spirit. Okay? This is Webster's 1828 Dictionary. For um, defining words, this, this, I use this, I recommend this. This is a valuable tool. It is a valuable tool that is useful. It's a useful tool. But you know what? As useful as this is, and I use it myself, recommend it. As useful as this is, guess what? It's not infallible. It's useful, helpful. Amen. Amen. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying anything against Webster's 1828 Dictionary. But I do want to show you something. Okay? I do want to show you something. Okay. In Webster's 1828 Dictionary, in, 18, in the, uh, 1828, uh, where is it? Where is it? One second, I got to find it. <laughs> I beg your pardon there, brethren. The word recompense, the word recompense, as defined by Webster's 1828 Dictionary, recompense, spelled R-E-C-O-M-P-E-N-S-E, -E. recompense with an S, remember that, verb, transitive, to compensate, to make return of an equivalent for anything given, done, or su suffered, as to recompense a person for services, for fidelity, or for the sacrifices of time, for loss, or damages. The word is followed by the person or the service. We recompense a person for his services, or we recompense his kindness. It is usually found more easy to neglect 
than to recompense a favor. Two, to requite, to repay, to return an equivalent in a bad sense. Recompense to no man evil for evil. A verb, Romans 12. To make an equivalent return in profit or produce. The labor of man is recompensed by the fruit of the earth. Four, to compensate, to make amends by anything equivalent. Soliman, S-O-L-Y-M-A-N, said he would find occasion for them to recompense that disgrace. Knowles. Five, to make restitution or an equivalent return for. Numbers chapter five, he says. Now, recompense, R-O-C-O-M-P-E-N-S-E, -E, a noun. An equivalent return for anything given, anything given, okay? Done or suffered, compensation, reward, amends, as a recompense for services, for damages, for loss, etc. Requital, return of evil or suffering or other equivalent as a punishment. To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Deuteronomy chapter 32, okay? Clearly used as a noun, right? And every transgression and disobedience received, there's the action, a just recompense of reward. Hebrews chapter 2. And then there's recompense with an S. Recompensing and so on and so on. But in Webster's 1828 dictionary. <coughs> recompense. Spelled with an S. Can be used as a, as a verb or noun. Might be saying. Uh, yeah. Duh. Yeah. Okay Brad. What, what's the point? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Note he said in Deuteronomy chapter 32, the first appearance of recompense. Okay? Well, that's what he said in Deuteronomy chapter 2. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. You're going to notice something. You ought to notice something. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 35. If you do not have the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, you're going to miss this. Look at the verse, okay? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. With a C. We we just looked in Webster's 1828 Dictionary, both spelled with an S. I have not checked this, but I'm sure if you were to look in one of the uh, Catholic Bibles, you know, like the NIV, the ESV, and so on and so forth, I'm sure if you were to look into one of those, it would all be spelled with an S. Hold up. To me belongeth vengeance and recompense with the C. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. To me belongeth vengeance. Vengeance is an action. Vengeance, okay, is an action. And recompense. What is a noun? Person, place, or thing. Okay? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense with the sea, person, place, or thing. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. Okay? Okay, hold up. Go to Job. Go to Job chapter 15. Job chapter 15, verse 31. Job chapter 15, verse 31. Let not him that is deceived trust in vanity, for vanity shall be his 
recompense. That's a thing, isn't it? Vanity shall be his recompense. His action? No. Person, place, or thing. Recompense is used as a noun there, and it's spelled with a C. But what about recompense with an S? Recompense with... Here's your homework assignment. Recompense with a C appears 19 times in the authorized version of the scriptures. You go find them. Every single time that you see recompense with a C in the authorized version of the scriptures, it's a, it's a noun. Look for yourself. What is a noun? A person, place, or thing? Recompense with a C within the scriptures is a noun. Go to Numbers chapter 5. Go to Numbers chapter 5. Okay? Numbers chapter 5. Numbers chapter 5, verse 7. Then they shall confess their sin which they have done, and he shall recompense his trespass. Now, recompense with an S. Is that a noun, person, place, or thing? No, that's an action, isn't it? Look at, look at it, look at it. That's an action. As in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 35, it was a noun. Then they shall confess their sin, which they have done, and he shall recompense his trespass with the principle thereof, and add unto it the fifth part thereof, and give it unto him against whom he hath trespassed. Let's, uh, let's look at one more, one more, okay? Go to Proverbs. Go to Proverbs, chapter 12. Proverbs chapter 12. You look, you look this up on your own time. Okay, you look up, you, you do this, you got to do your own work and research sometimes there. Okay, you do this. Okay, but I, I'm just pointing this out to you. I'm just pointing this out to you. Okay. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 14. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. Okay? Now that's a C. You see that? That's a C. The recompense, C. That's a thing. Now, okay, go to Proverbs. Proverbs. Chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 22. Say not that I will recompense with an S evil, but wait on the Lord and he shall save thee. Is that a noun? No. That's an action. That's an action. That's a verb. What's the point? Every word of God is pure. Recompense with a C appears 19 times. Recompense with an S appears 27 times. And when you look into the context and at the verses themselves, each and every one, hi, Recompense with a C is always denoting a noun. Recompense with an S is always denoting a verb, an action. Mr. Webster, bless his heart and soul, got it wrong. Using S, recompense with an S, when the scriptures themselves 
show you the proper about recompense with a C denoting a noun with S denoting a verb. Isn't that something interesting? Oh, well, Brad, that's just about one, one letter. God is spirit. But wait a minute, Brad, there's an A in there. Yeah, I know. God is a spirit. Noting what? Distinction. God is a spirit. When you read that, God is a spirit, that shows you, means unto you that, okay, is a spirit, so there's a spirit from God, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, and the Lord is that spirit, and there is another spirit, a spirit. It shows you and tells you that there's a distinction between the spirit of God and the spirit of Antichrist, okay? The spirit of Antichrist is in the scriptures, by the way. Prove me wrong, okay? So see, but you take that A out, God is spirit. How would someone be able to know the difference or distinction between the two? Mm -hmm. How would they do that? If you take out just one little letter. One little letter. God is spirit. So you mean the care Catholic who's going blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, well, God is spirit. Yeah, little G God of this world, maybe. But see, that A, God is a spirit, notes distinction. Like I said, like I said, it's just going to be a quick video. I use Webster's 1828 Dictionary. I recommend Webster's 1828 Dictionary. You take this and the, I got a 1997 uh, Webster Miriam. You put this one on this side, that one on that side, and compare the two, the same words, you'll see a lot of differences and changes in meaning. Okay? In my opinion, the best dictionary that you can use that man has written is Webster's 1828 Dictionary. But the best dictionary that there is for the scriptures is the scriptures themselves. The spirit of truth will guide you into all truth. The Lord Jesus Christ opened their understanding to understand the scriptures. He expounded unto them the scriptures. Okay? The Lord is that spirit. Every word of God is pure. You get it? That, that was just something very interesting that um, I had recently been shown. Uh, the Lord kind of, <laughs> the Lord showed me that, um, about his word. And you got people out there messing with God's word, changing it, you know, like the, my perversions are right there on the bottom, you know, like the NIV, the ESV, the NASB, the Revised Standard Version, the New Revised Standard Version, the mess, all written by seminary trained theologians, scholars, textual critics, yea hath God said. Um, uh, in other words, Jesuit trained. Like I said, I, I'm Webster's 1828 Dictionary is a wonderful, in the appropriate sense, thank you, brother, is a wonderful tool that is useful, okay? Very useful, yes. Do remember, dear friends, this is all you need. 
And you also need the spirit of truth, the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, to guide you into all truth. Because the natural man receiveth not the things of the Lord, because they are spiritually discerned. Okay? The Lord himself, and the Lord is that spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, will guide you into all truth, dear friends. And the word of the Lord, the word of God, the authorized version of the, script, of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. This is the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration word of God. I tell you, hey, don't use an NIV. For what should I use? Use the scriptures. These are perfect. This is perfect. Because this cuts you, boy. This will cut you. And this is, by the way, what I stand on. This is what I stand on. And until proven otherwise on something that I have taught before, until proven wrong through the scriptures, here I stand. You understand? But anyway, that's... You look that up on your own time. Okay, there's, there's your homework assignment. Okay? You go check that out. All right? And, I, and again, I, I'm not... not I, 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 use, I use Webster's 1828 Dictionary. I did a video, uh, uh, a word study, kind of, on the word eternal using that very Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Yes. Mr. Webster botched it on that with recompense with an S, the two definitions that we looked at. He botched it on that. Hey, hey, whatever. But the scriptures, there are two different spellings of the same word. One with a C, one with an S. Why is that? Because one is a noun, one is a verb. And when Mr. Webster, which I read to you, same spelling means either verb or noun. You look that up. You look that up. Before you start commenting all your crazy stuff, you look it up. You do the research yourself. What is a noun? Person, place, or thing. What is a verb? Boop, an action. Very interesting stuff, isn't it? This is all you need, friend. The other stuff, yeah, very helpful. Very useful. This is all you need. And you kind of also need the spirit of truth who will guide you into all truth. Who is the spirit of truth? The Lord is that spirit. The Lord Jesus Christ. And who is Jesus Christ? God our Father. You chew on that one for a little while, okay? Bye-bye.